What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, and I'm back at y'all with another one. So, uh, ESPN and Bob Arum are trying to force Deontay Wilder to have a, a five-fight contract. They're trying to force Deontay Wilder to sign a five-fight contract uh, with a guarantee of fighting Tyson Fury, but no, no timetable and no guarantee when he would face Tyson Fury, right? Um... They're saying that, and his first fight is going to have to be on the ESPN um, Plus app, you know, um, as part of the deal to try to bolster the app, to try to make the app bigger, right? Uh, against an interim opponent, not Tyson Fury on the ESPN app. Um, so at, at, at this point in time, man, they, they're just, they're, they're blatantly using Deontay Wilder's star power and uh, Deontay Wilder's status um, to bolster the ESPN app and, uh, ESPN boxing overall point blank and period um, Bob Arum is orchestrating this and Tyson Fury, you know fell into the um, trap and uh, He gave in and uh, He's helping force uh, Deontay Wilder's hand in order to get for Deontay Wilder to get the rematch versus him um, <clears throat> This is really ridiculous at this point man. I'm very disappointed in Tyson Fury and his whole approach to this situation Uh uh, reports are that Tyson Fury had the contract in his hand for a 50-50 um, um, split for over a week and he refused to respond to it uh, due to the fact that um, <clears throat> Frank Warren was playing both sides, uh, negotiating with um, Bob Arum in top rank, at the same time negotiating with Al Heyman and the PBC, uh, Steven Espinosa and Showtime at the same token, you know, um, which is really disappointing, man. And then Tyson Fury's comments about this whole situation is even more disappointing, to say the very least, man. To say, to say the very to say the very least, man. Tyson Fury's um um uh, comments about this not really necessarily wanting to fight, not really caring if the fight is next. You know, uh, he's using his um situation uh, with um. Uh, uh, his depression and his alcohol abuse and uh, um, and his his store patterns and his mental issues as uh, a way to bolster himself. Um, it's looking like he could possibly face uh, um, uh, uh, there's two opponents that Tyson Fury is being rumored to face. One uh, actually is three. Kublai Kublai Pulev is one of the opponents. Um, uh, as well as the the guy who beat um uh um Brian Jennings, I think his name is uh uh um uh yeah so uh um you know Kublai Polev uh um Oscar Rivas the guy who just beat Brian Jennings and uh they've been in contact um with Joseph Parker you know so that's the three um opponents that's being uh possible names for Tyson Fury to uh, make his debut on ESPN in top rank. Is uh, Oscar Rivas, um, Kublai Pulev, and uh, uh, Joseph Parker, one of the three. If not, he'll fight two of the three. You know, uh, two of the three. He's looking to fight three times this year. We might see him fight all three so at some point in time this year. You know, by by before the year's up, before we see him face Deontay Wilder. They're claiming that uh, they want interim fights. You know, a fight before the rematch and then go into the rematch. But I highly doubt that. You know, I could see them um, taking on Oscar Rivas and then uh, um, um, taking on Kubat Pulev, who's he's trying to force Kubat Pulev to get into a purse bid. This being Bob Arum, um, because Kubat Pulev is the mandatory for um, Anthony Joshua. So he's trying to get um, uh, he's the he's the I believe Kubat Pulev is the uh, um, <clears throat> is the WB, the IBF's. He's the IBF um, number one ranked challenger, so he'll become the mandatory for Anthony Joshua for the for the IBF title. So, um, so they're looking to uh, force Anthony Joshua to go into a purse bid, which they feel like they'll win the purse bid and uh, get the um, get get the advantage over Anthony Joshua as, as far as the situation goes with the IBF. Uh, now, um, so I can see um, him going the route of Joseph Parker first, right? And uh, you hear you heard this here first, man. I can see him going the route with Joseph Parker first, 
we could see Brian Jennings versus Revis uh, in the rematch, and the winner of that fight fighting Tyson Fury in his second fight on ESPN. So his first fight, his debut fight, could be against Joseph Parker, which is a big enough name to try to sell to the public on ESPN for his debut, not outside of Deontay Wilder, you know, um, Dylan White, Anthony Joshua, you know, and uh, Luis King Kong Ortiz, right? And so with that said, um, it's being... It's being uh, 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 reported that they had this contract. Tyson Fury had the 50-50 offer and the contract in hand for the May 18 fight for a week without responding. <clears throat> uh, wow, man. <clears throat> it's, it's really uh, disheartening. It's really, uh, um, you know, um, uh, disappointing in Tyson Fury to maneuver like this, you know, um, I was really looking forward to uh, uh, um, Tyson Fury and uh, Deontay Wilder rematch. You know, Tyson Fury seemed to be a man of his word, and um, he seemed like he really wanted these these fights. But uh, now it's looking like Tyson Fury uh, saw an opportunity to uh, bolster his uh, his status and his profile, and uh, get in a fight with Deontay Wilder. It seems like, he, and he said this. You know, Tyson Fury said this, man. He says that I chose Wilder. He didn't choose me. I chose Wilder. I could have went and had uh, tune-ups. And this seems like they had a plan all along. If you could get past this hurdle, if you could get over the hump, if you could beat Deontay Wilder or just be competitive with Deontay Wilder, this is why they were so um, uh, um, satisfied with the draw, right? Because a draw or, or um, a victory was, was, was su sufficient enough to do what they're doing right now. I wouldn't be... A big surprise if it came out that this was already a part of their plan. We saw his his trainer come out, um, Ben Davidson, and say that he felt like Tyson Fury should have an interim bout before going into the rematch with Deontay Wilder some months ago. And everybody was turning their nose up at the situation, just saying it was Ben Davis. We didn't hear from Tyson Fury, so on and so forth. But this seems like it's part of the plan in hindsight. As we look at hindsight, this seemed like it was part of the plan all, all along, right? Uh <clears throat> And with Tyson Fury's words, I'm not too sure Fury said about the Wilder fight. I'm not a poli I'm not a uh, political person. The promoters do what promoters do. There's not too much I can do about it, is there? Question mark. I signed the contract now. Whatever fights they get, they get. <clears throat> wow, man. This is Tyson Fury's words. So he's not even intrigued. He's not um, looking to a rematch, man. It's disappointing, man. <clears throat> It's very disappointing, man. Uh, you know, Tyson Fury, man, I thought that he was a man of his word. Uh, I thought that, you know, um, that Tyson Fury, you know, was actually looking to fight the best. You know, as he stated, you know, as he was saying with Anthony Joshua, that Anthony Joshua wasn't looking to fight the best, uh, so on and so forth. And he was looking to do the, you know, I, I, I'm coming to the States to face the man that Anthony Joshua didn't want to I'm going to face the man, Anthony Joshua, didn't want to do it. So I'll go over to the States and do it in his backyard, so on and so forth. You know, I'll take full advantage of it. And it turned out just to be all a ploy, man. It was all a plan. Uh, it seems like this was all part of the plan from the jump, man. And so with that said, um, they're looking to make Deontay Wilder have to have a five-fight um, contract with ESPN. Um one being, as I stated, you know, on ESPN Plus app. The first, like I said, the first fight will be on the ESPN Plus app. Uh, ESPN Plus app. You know, um, <clears throat> the proposed deal for Wilder would require him to fight someone other than Fury on ESPN Plus. The streaming service Aram's company is helping ESPN push. Wilder would be paid handsomely to fight an, under, an undetermined opponent next on ESPN Plus because of top ranks budget. For the fights on ESPN Plus is bigger than its budget for the fights on ESPN itself platform. So the ESPN Plus app um, has a bigger budget than ESPN, you know, um, the basic um, platform, right? While the Fury rematch is part of a five fight offer, yet the deal could require Wilder 40 and 0, you know, uh, to take multiple fights before facing Fury a second time in an ESPN pay per view event. While Wilder did make it known Monday that he isn't contractually tied to Showtime or any other network, he also appreciates Showtime has done to what Showtime has done to build his brand. 
and his bank account, right? You know, uh, there are financial components to Top Rank's offer that are attractive. Wilder wants to remain loyal to Showtime, you know, um, and Deontay Wilder is stating that, you know, why does he want to turn his career over to Bob Arum when Bob Arum uh, didn't have a part in building his career to where it is today? You know, now he's just supposed to go and turn it over to Bob Arum just because uh, you're dangling the carrot of Tyson Fury rematch in my face. Uh, it's very disappointing at this point in time. Like I stated, I didn't think the Tyson Fury rematch was going to happen after they announced the, um, the deal he struck with uh, ESPN and top rank because it just don't make business sense to put uh, Deontay Wilder in the ring with Tyson Fury or vice versa, put Tyson Fury in the ring with Deontay Wilder and run the risk of getting him knocked out in his first fight on ESPN, you know, and he has a five fight uh, contract deal with ESPN. So this is coming from Bob Aaron, you know, um, and uh, with that said, I didn't think it was good business sense. I think the proper thing for them to do business wise is to put Tyson Fury in the ring with Revis. Uh, Oscar Rivas and then, uh, you know, Joseph Parker and, you know, Kubat Pulev, should he be victorious versus uh, Anthony Joshua? Because I see the angle that they're trying to take. They're trying to force, uh, make, they're trying to um, force Anthony Joshua with the IBF situation to go into a purse bid. Hopefully getting Kubat Pulev to win that purse bid. I mean, to win that fight with Anthony Joshua. Then get him a big fight with Tyson Fury, a title shot. Should he come come away with the IBF strap, you know, then they'll look to try to get um, uh, um, Tyson Fury in the ring with uh, um, with uh, uh, Kubat Pulev for the IBF strap. That's a that's an angle to try to get Tyson Fury a title. You understand? And then to try to get him more leverage. You know, um, <clears throat> you know, it's it's just disappointing, man, that. Um, that uh, 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 this is the way that Tyson, this is the route that Tyson Fury is choosing to go. I didn't want to feel like he was ducking Deontay Wilder. But at this point in time, man, it's become pretty evident that Tyson Fury never wanted the rematch. Uh, he was offered a 50-50 deal, 50-50 split for the Deontay Wilder rematch. Also, um, the WBC can't do anything about it. You know, WBC um, ordered it go to a purse bid and things of that nature. But... Tyson Fury's not interested, neither is Bob Arum. They said, good luck. Bob Arum actually says, good luck with that, with the WBC ordering a purse bid. Bob Arum says, um, you know, uh, it's not up to WBC. They don't run us. They don't control anything. So good luck with them ordering a purse bid because it has no merit on what we're doing over here. Uh, not, not, it, does, it doesn't help. It doesn't hurt. the. Um, it doesn't um, affect our outcome. So um, <clears throat> here's what Bob Arum had to say about the, the WBC impending purse bid for the, for the make for the Wilder Fury rematch doesn't figure to make an impact in this mess. It doesn't factor into it at all. Aaron told Boxing Scene on Monday, the WBC wants the fight to happen. Good luck to them, but we don't need them to tell us how the purses should should be. That'll come reasonable with reasonable negotiations. Is part of what Aram said about the WBC ordering the purse bid. So you can chalk that up. Uh, so, and uh, um, we could see, possibly see, this is also saying that um, we could possibly see Deontay Wilder face Dominic Brazil, his mandatory, in May 18th. So that's all I got for y'all, man. We're not going to get the Tyson Fury Deontay Wilder rematch anytime soon. Uh, they're trying to force Deontay Wilder to have a five fight deal. Uh, with with no known date for the rematch with Tyson Fury, he could possibly face two to three interim fights before he get the rematch with Tyson Fury if he was to sign this deal. So don't look forward to seeing Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder rematch anytime soon. It's not going to happen. But that's all I got for you. It's your boy, Blue Blue Bus Sports TV. Hey, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Bus Sports TV, all one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shouts out to the entire LDBC. Shouts out to New Media. Shouts out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share these videos. That's all I got for y'all. It's your boy Blue. Peace.